I've covered FreeBSD MIFs a few times over the years on this channel. In each video, the number of existing MIFs seems to shrink, which is great, as that means more and more people are being educated about FreeBSD, in no small part thanks to yours truly, I'd like to think. So in this video, I will cover five MIFs that have been asked on my channel sporadically. FreeBSD is difficult to use. You know, when we first use some advanced machinery or devices, say a microwave or a smart TV, there is a period of uncertainty. As what do we do? What can we do with it? How can I possibly remember all the options? Well, it was like that, no doubt, when you use your first computer. For me, it was an 8-bit microcomputer called the Dragon 32. It's uh, a Tandy Coco clone. At first, it was confusing where you had to learn commands to get anything done, such as loading software. But over time, and with practice, you learn. You commit your experience to memory, and eventually it seems second nature. And this is the same for more modern systems, be it Windows or Mac, where questions of how do I install updates or uninstall software arise. How do I configure this or that? How to troubleshoot issues, etc. All seems daunting, but with perseverance, you will eventually get it. And it's with this in mind that FreeBSD is no different. Sure, in some respect, it's like an 8-bit system of old, where you will be presented with a text interface and not a GUI. But with only a few commands, you will have a familiar yet new system in front of your eyes to rival anything your friends may have. And there is also a FreeBSD-derived OS that has been described as a gateway into FreeBSD. It's based on the latest FreeBSD and has a friendly interface. I'm sure all Windows, Mac and Linux users will be comfortable with. And that's GhostBSD. It's easy to install, easy to use, and will enable a very easy and smooth entry into the world of FreeBSD. In fact, you don't have to touch the command line at all. But that's a topic of another video. FreeBSD is for servers, not desktops. It's no secret that FreeBSD is a perfect choice for servers. It's got tight ZFS integration, not hindered by license issues. It's stable, it's fast, it's not bloated, or have unnecessary services running in the background leaking data to some unknown home base. It is, by default, a lean install, one that can be tailored to whatever you need it to be. It's this set of advantages that make it a fantastic desktop OS as well. You can have a lean, mean, and ready-to-be-seen rice stop window manager for your desktop. You can have a powerful workstation where functionality is king. Or you can have a system locked down so it's ideal for inquisitive children and students. I've been using FreeBSD as my desktop and daily driver for nearly 13 years, and I don't in any way class myself as an advanced user, so if I can do it, so can you. FreeBSD isn't for gamers. This is perhaps the most difficult to counter. It is true, untrue, true, and untrue. If that sounds confusing, then let me explain. The first truism comes from that there isn't a native Steam client for FreeBSD, like there is for Linux, and Mac, and obviously Windows. It seems that Valve doesn't see the point, as FreeBSD isn't used by as many as Linux for the desktop experience, but that doesn't mean we can't use Steam. It has been proven to work via Wine, the Windows abstraction layer, so there is that way, but also via the Linux version of Steam, perhaps better than Wine. And although it does require a little configuring, it also works well. So technically we have Steam, just not a native version. The first untrue part is that there is a wealth of free and open source games that you will find on Linux. You will find them on FreeBSD. Many are classics in their own right. Some are remakes of older, once commercial games, and lots are just fun. The next true is developers like Steam 
don't see the platform, FreeBSD, as worth investing in. So they don't. Which then doesn't bring in users seeking a gaming experience on FreeBSD, which then justifies the developers' opinions. Perhaps there could be a push by the powers that be to market FreeBSD as a game development system, which may then lead to some top games being made on and for FreeBSD. Who knows? After all, Valve took the chance on Linux and it paid off. So this leads to the final untrue and the use of FreeBSD as the base for Nintendo Switch and Sony PlayStation 3, 4 and 5. These gaming systems have sold millions and each and every one runs a version of FreeBSD. Imagine that. So, in a way, even though we don't have Steam officially, we can at least fire up a game on either one of these systems and know that we're playing on FreeBSD. There is no software for FreeBSD. This is a charge levied at Linux as well, but to a lesser extent. Namely, the absence of Adobe, Microsoft Office, etc. The latter one less so as it can be accessed online via a browser. But for FreeBSD, the picture is a little bleak. Like the situation with games, it seems that the big developers don't feel the need to support FreeBSD. But that's okay, as FreeBSD has access to a wealth of high-quality and professionally made free and open-source software such as Inkscape, LibreOffice, Gritter, Audacity and Blender, to name but a few. Not to mention the ability to run Windows software such as Office via Wine and selected Linux software, giving FreeBSD a wider choice if need be. Heck, you can even run Microsoft Edge if you really want to. You have to learn commands. You will have to learn some commands, and indeed use the command line if you want to use the main FreeBSD OS. And that's unavoidable. I can't argue against that. But there is a way to use FreeBSD without needing to learn a plethora of commands and shortcuts. As mentioned previously, there is GhostBST. It's a FreeBSD system, with the power of FreeBSD and the user-friendliness of, say, Linux Mint. It has tools that will enable everyday tasks, and you can see my latest review on GhostBSD for a rundown on them, without the need to type anything in the terminal. I think that it's a remarkable progression for FreeBSD, and although it isn't FreeBSD per se, it is FreeBSD under the hood. And if you wanted to use FreeBSD as your daily driver, as quick as possible, with little fuss, then this is a great choice. So really, FreeBSD has come a long way. I remember the myths that uh, I used to see on a regular basis, it were, what, 10, 20, 30 of them. You know, you could just, you could see them on comments on every video or every review. There were just comments floating around that people's perception. And, and slowly, this has whittled down to a point now where I'm just listing five. There may be more, of course, and probably someone in the comments will list one. <laughs> That's fine. I'll address it later. But for me, I can see a progression. I can actually see a progression from what FreeBSD used to be perceived as to what it is now. And that's fantastic. So it means that all the effort that I'm putting in, all the effort the FreeBSD Foundation's putting in, all the effort that Gary H Tech is putting in, we cooperatively are busting these myths and that can only be a good thing for FreeBSD from the FreeBSD community. If you like this video can please subscribe. If you like the video please give it a thumbs up and if them two things have happened consider clicking that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I do all my videos myself. I don't use AI. Uh, some people say that should. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. And I'm very proud that the videos I make are made on FreeBSD uh, with my passion for FreeBSD. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.